Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Brandi Rainey, and it is my privilege to be here uh, with Amanda Porter from Enlighten Healing tonight to share with you some great tips and techniques on using um, essential oils for emotions. Huge thanks to Oil Life for having us tonight. They're always such a great guest, or such a great host, um, and we're thrilled to be guests with them tonight. And thank you for the recipes and all the fun ideas that we were able to see earlier. Um, it's just such a great time to just hang out together um, here in Utah and also online so that we can all learn more about essential oils. So uh, it is my great privilege to introduce my friend and mentor uh, really in, in um, emotional, uh, emotional healing with essential oils, um, Amanda Porter. She actually is a co-author of this great book, um, Emotions and Essential Oils, that was written in 2012. So we're celebrating our five-year anniversary of this book. Um, just in the last year, couple of years, people have really gotten excited about the topic of uh, essential oils for emotions and emotional healing and emotional support, but Enlighten has actually been around since the beginning. This was the very first book ever published um, on the subject and is considered the authority on the subject, and we're just so grateful um, to have it. It's such a wonderful resource to us, as oils are a wonderful resource to us to help us as we're working through um, some of the things that we want to maybe change or make better in our lives or some of the things that we want to bring, new positive things that we want to bring into our lives as well. So tonight we're going to talk to you um, about a fun topic that's associated with the ideas of showers, uh, baby showers and wedding showers. We're talking about new beginnings. So it's my privilege to introduce you to Amanda Porter um, and she's going to be great here for the next few minutes. Thank you, Brandy. Um, it's so great to be here with the live audience and also with you at home. And again, I also want to thank Oil Life for inviting us back. This is our favorite topic to talk about emotions and essential oils and to um, bring those two things together and show you how effective they can be in personal transformation and in your life. So as Brandy mentioned, the topic tonight is generational healing. And it's a really uh, important topic and it ties in with what Oil Life is doing tonight, which is April showers. And so they're talking all about you know, new beginnings, new marriages, new babies, um, new starts in general. And so we're going to um, tie into that topic and offer suggestions on how essential oils can help us make the best uh, when we're starting new. And, and really talk about how essential oils help us identify um, positive things and negative things and um, things we may want to bring into these new experiences, um, new relationships, uh, new family dynamics, and also maybe help us identify some things that we may want to leave behind. There may be things that we know that are in our family dynamic that just um, haven't worked for us. We want to clear the slate and start new. So that's what we're talking about tonight. And before I get into all of that, um, I'm going to lay the foundation a little bit so we can understand how family patterns are generated, how they start, where they come from, um, so that we can get a better foundation before we move into addressing some of these. So um, the next slide, is, um, is what we call the emotional response cycle. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about this. Oh, that's our book, sorry, our next one. Um, getting there, oh, perfect, thank you so much. Uh, basically, what happens in life is that uh, you have experiences. And when we have an experience, there's a stimuli from somewhere in our external environment. And through one of our senses, so sight, hearing, touch, we get um, information that comes through. And that information is routed to a specific part of the brain, the limbic system, and specifically within the limbic system, the amygdala. So the amygdala is what I call the decision maker because it directs traffic and it makes a lot of really important decisions. Now, the limbic system is pretty complicated. We're gonna keep it simple for now and just focus on what the amygdala does, which is you know point traffic. The next thing that happens is once a decision is made, in the limbic system, um, there's an emotion that's generated that's associated with it, and there's also um, chemicals that are released into the body. Hey, let there be light. <laughs> uh, so um, an example of this is, so the first time, maybe the first time a small child um, is ex introduced to fire, maybe a campfire, and they touch it, and they don't know that it's gonna be hot, and they don't know it's gonna be painful, so they experience the sensation through their sense of touch. And it, when it's routed into the amygdala, 
the body, they're, they're sending, there's a warning signal that goes off. So the amygdala is going to say, this is a problem. Uh, this is not good. Um, and the emotion generated from experience like that is probably going to be fear because pain usually causes fear in us. We don't know, you know, where that came from, but there's a realization that I've been, I've been hurt. And so there's fear that's generated. And usually the um, chemicals that are released with fear are adrenaline because it's our survival instinct to actually to get away from something that could be a potential harm, that could be a life-threatening situation. So you can see how that goes through the process and emotions are generated, chemicals are released. The issue happens when we talk about patterns is repeating stimulus. So you have something that happens over and over again and your brain is always learning. Such, so smart. Neural pathways being created. They're working with the hippocampus, memories, bringing all of your life experiences together to help you, to help you learn and to know more the next time. The interesting thing that happens is Let's say that two months later, this same child who was burned on the fire sees a pot um, on the stove kind of go up. They can have, without touching the fire, the fear response. The same decision, the amygdala recognizes that. That's close enough to what happened before. I'm going to send the same signal. The fear is going to be generated. The chemicals are going to follow. And then when you get that stimulus, like I said, happening over and over again, uh, you get a, a neural pathway, you get this, this super highway, where your brain knows automatically what to do without ever involving the prefrontal cortex, without ever involving your decision making. So um, the problem comes in is when you get something negative repeated in your life enough times that you then have an automatic response that you don't feel in control of. So suddenly you have a pattern, you have a habit and um, of emotionally reacting maybe in ways that you don't like. This is an appropriate reaction to fire, but there could be other things that you've developed. Um, fear of other people, distrust, anger, certain things that when you get any kind of stimulus that brings it to your attention, you go right to that response, even if you would prefer that you didn't. So um, I want to bring this into a real life pattern, to bring it into the generational family pattern topic that we were talking about tonight to give you an understanding of how this plays out in families. So we know how it plays out individually, but how it plays out in families. So I'm gonna talk about my great grandfather. His name is George, was George. And um, he was really, really honest in his business dealings. He was really fair. And he got this nickname called, they called him Honest George, because they always knew that whenever he was a part of something that they, it was going to be fair and it was going to be honest and they could trust him. So he, his, he had this ethic and this pattern that he had developed in his life of um, being a strong, hardworking person and, and really believing in doing your civic duty. So doing right by people and making sure that you're giving back and that you're responsible in your community. So this was a really strong ethic, a really strong pattern, so much so that it passed on to my grandfather. So my grandfather took this ethic, he became a police officer, he wanted to give back to his community, and he um, also volunteered in community service organizations and those kinds of things. And that then passed on to my mom's generation. And all of them have this civic duty thing. And they, they really care about giving back. They volunteer. Um, I have an uncle who does search and rescue. My mom has always done animal rescue and all kinds of things. So this, this generational pattern is passed down so that I have this method this, this message from the pattern in my family that you work hard, you're responsible, and that you need to give back to your community. So that is a really positive pattern that's passed down from my grandfather. All you can see it in all these generations. But there's another side. We get positive from family and we get negative from family. And with my great grandfather, um, he had a pretty troubled home life. And his father died when he was three. And his mother was so overwhelmed by that experience. She had three children. He was the youngest. He was the only boy. That she ended up really struggling. And there was a lot of abuse that happened in his life. And, and uh, it went so far, actually, that she tried to have the state take him away. She just wanted to get rid of him. They wouldn't take him because he wasn't a delinquent and he hadn't anything wrong they just said you can't just give away your kid because you don't want him anymore 
So he's pretty scarred. We understand that my great grandpa is pretty scarred from that experience. And what he did with that, he didn't have um, coping skills that were necessarily productive. And he ended up in his own family, when he got a family, being fairly verbally degrading and a pretty tough guy to live with. So in my grandfather's generation, he was his son and he was the object of a lot of that. And um, it was pretty hard on him and he ended up being pretty insecure and distressing. That pattern starts coming down. He also struggled with being verbally degrading. That, pass, that pattern passed down into my mom's generation. And so my grandpa also became an alcoholic and he was able to overcome his alcoholism, but my mother has all the symptoms of being an adult child and an alcoholic. And um, she's done a great job and she's really plowed ahead, but she has all of the you know, hypervigilance, questioning her worth, fear of disapproval, fear of conflict, all of that. And she's my mom. And so you know, we learn this sort of overdeveloped sense of responsibility, hypersensitivity, hypervigilance, because there could be a threat in your environment that's always sort of unknown. And that's a negative pattern. And you can see how people's choices in the family line affected all these generations that followed. And um, the thing about it is that people, people are both positive and negative. People have both of these things. And in every family, the patterns of coping or not coping are passed down. So we end up inheriting a lot of styles of doing things, emotional patterns, um, coping skills, and negative emotions that we don't want, but we also in inherit positive things that we do want to perpetuate, that we do want to carry on, um, depending on what you're looking at. So now I want to involve you. It's your turn. I want to bring you into this to help you identify or work with some of your generational patterns that might be good uh, you might want to enhance some things that were good in your family line, or they might be bad. There might be things that you want to work on and uh, redirect. So um, I'm going to start this, because whenever we talk about generational issues, we have to talk about white fur. So I have a bottle of white fur because I want to pass it around. Um, white fur is the oil of generational healing. So let me start this here. I'm just have, hopefully you have your white fur at home and you can sniff it, but we'll pass it around here. And then I'll just read the description um, out of Emotions and Essential Oils there. We did a little excerpt uh, from it just to set the stage and help get us sort of in the mindset of dealing with these issues. So white fur, um, as I mentioned, the oil of generational healing, patterns and traditions are passed down from family member to family member. Some of these patterns are positive, while others are negative and destructive. White fur assists the individual in unearthing negative patterns from the hidden recesses of the body and soul. As they are brought to the light of consciousness, they can be dealt with and put to rest. So we're going to do an exercise, a little activity, as you're smelling the white fur and kind of giving in a space. Um, Brandy's gonna send around a handout, but you can follow along at home. It's a really simple handout, it's only three columns. And we'll walk you through, if you have pen and paper, what to write in each column. So um, we might, it might be a download. Um, so it probably will be a download, but you can also just write the columns on the paper and we'll walk you through it. We can all do it together. So um, the first step, as you get the paper, I don't want to get too far ahead. Looks like, okay, it's coming around. Um, I want you to write down at least three lessons that you learned in your life from your parents or your grandparents. And these can be positive or negative but at least three lessons. That's in column one titled lessons. So just think about your family patterns, think about the things that you were told or the things that you observed and write down the lessons um, that, you, um, that you inherited. So take a minute and do that if you will. Question. Can you give us an example of what a, le what a lesson might be? Oh, I can. Do you wanna go to the next slide? I can give that. Um, oh, good, thank you. So, um, for example, uh, we have, this could be a lesson that you got uh, from mom or dad or grandpa, whoever, that says, 
you heard these kinds of things and you understood this from your life experience with them. So we accept our lot in life. We don't accomplish great things. We live a simple, moderate lifestyle and don't expect help or handouts from others. That could be a lesson. You, you got this lesson that says, this is what we do. This is our lot, we accept it, we move on. Um, work ethic, it could be lots of things. There's so many um, distrust. You know, we, we never trust anybody in authority. Uh, don't, you know, there's no free lunch and there's no this. And you think about your family and kind of the things that are passed down. And, uh, oh, I see some writing. Oh, so stop talking if I'm interrupting you guys. So, and that's in column one. We'll move on to the second step in just a minute. But for right now, we're still in column one. Just thinking about the things, patterns that you may have seen that have been passed down to you. Any other questions about that? Yes, thank you, Brandy. Yes, so Brandy pointed out, as we talked about earlier, these could be really positive things. Service, giving back, love for the arts, um, love of life, love of nature, uh, all kinds of things. So it could be positive or negative, but the key in doing this exercise is not to resist either side, to not resist putting down anything that's positive because of maybe feelings that are there, and to not resist putting down any negative because of guilt of acknowledging things that are negative. We just want to just simple things that come to your mind and mark them down on your list. I'll give you just a minute. Okay, I see the heads popping up here. So um, a lot of you can replay this. If you need more time later, you can always go back and pause and work through it. But we'll move on here to get the to get the example going. So the second step that you're going to do in this process is column number two for those of you following along at home, and it's called emotions on the handout that we gave out tonight. Is you're going to identify the emotions that you feel identify with the lessons, and again. These could be positive, these could be negative. In our example, this is more of a negative lesson that we're gonna to use to help give you some ideas. But the emotions that may have come from this sort of message and this lesson uh, could be fear, trapped. I mean, if you have to accept your lot in life, you could get feeling pretty trapped that you have no uh, opportunity to move. Um, lack of vision, scarcity, it's huge. Especially for people closer to parents who might have experienced a depression. Uh, grandparents, there's a lot of this a lot of times in family generations. Duty, pessimism, purposeless. So these could these are just examples of emotions that could come up when you think about this example, but also your own. You'll want to just be free with it. Again, don't judge the emotions. Don't let your, your head get involved and say, you can't feel that way about this. It wasn't that big a deal. Or you should feel this way about this. You should be grateful and not resentful or don't judge it, just let it flow, just write down the emotions that you feel when you think about that lesson or those lessons. And then I'll give you a couple prompt questions before we move on. Um, you could be afraid of, of living up to expectations or just overwhelmed by it, by expectations that came before you, what you needed to be or not to be. Uh, you could be ashamed of patterns that you inherited. Um, traditions, families, there's a lot of mixed emotions sometimes. And also, you could be excited that you've identified something that was really good in your family history that you want to make sure that you pass down and you make sure it's not forgotten from your generation on. So I'll give you some time here to write those emotions and some time at home and then we'll move on to the last step.
Okay, so heads are popping up here. Again, you can always pause and come back to this. Don't want to rush you, but we'll move through so you can get the concept. Um, the third step, which we'll get to in just a second, but is to identify um, a few of those words, the emotion words that you wrote down, and circle them, star them, um, because they're the ones that are the most emotionally charged for you, positive or negative. And so in our example, um, we're going to show you then how to connect those emotions with oils, the oils that can serve and help those the most. So um, how are you gonna do this? We have copies of our book, Emotions and Essential Oils, everyone has them. In the back of Emotions and Essential Oils is a usage guide. Um, so in this edition, let me see the page it starts on. Page 117, the very back, Appendix A, there is a whole list of all kinds of emotions. So I want you to find the ones that you circled or starred, the ones that you wanted to focus on, those emotions that are strong. I want you to find the, that emotion or the closest equivalent to it in the book and write down the oil on that third column that is associated with that emotion. Now just one last word of caution before I read this, or word of advice. You should probably pick the first oil um, that's listed because sometimes there's several for each emotion. But if you see the same oil across different emotions, you want to write that one down because it'll probably have a wider applicability to your situation. So um, here to follow up through the example that we gave on the slide, um, we found pessimistic was one of the words that was in the emotions list and we found uplifting blend for that. That's on page 97, in case you can't see the top of the slide, for those of you at home. Uh, for obligation, obligation to the family pattern was petty grain, and that's on page 55. And scarcity, which we talked about, uh, the oil for that, which addresses that best, is wild orange. That's on page 66. Uh, zest for life, we put lime, page 47. So that's just an example of how we put together our example. So I'll turn the time over to you to make your list and find your oils. And if you have any questions, let me know, but I'll give you a minute to read and to write. So remember, once you've got two or three, just for this exercise, you can obviously do more at home. You can obviously do more in depth later. Um, go ahead and turn to the oil descriptions, um, at least one, in the book, and read it. It's important to see if you resonate with what that oil is trying to offer, and if that seems like a good fit for your emotional situation, for the pattern that you're trying to address, um, or the pattern that you're trying to perpetuate. So um, go ahead and read one of those now, and then we'll talk about it.
I'm going to give you an example of um, what I might have found in the book. So let's say that I had scarcity, um, found it in a usage guide, and um, saw wild orange. So I'm going to read an excerpt from this so you can see how this might stand out to me if I was reading it. So in wild orange, which is the oil of abundance, um, it says in emotions and essential oils, at its core, wild orange teaches the true meaning of abundance. It encourages individuals to let go of scarcity-mindedness with all of its manifestations, uh, including fear, nervousness, inflexibility, workaholism, lack of humor, and the belief that there is not enough. Wild Orange reminds the soul of the limitless supply found in nature, and this oil teaches individuals to give without thought of compensation and encourages them to let go of their need to hoard, which is the epitome of scarcity. So all of a sudden I might have had images coming up that would relate to scarcity. Um, and so you wanna write that down and see if that resonates with you. That's the most important step. It is wait, find the oil, even if it's not the first one, move to the second emotion, go through a few, obviously at home, and find something that resonates with you so you know you're partnering with an oil that's gonna help you personally with the emotion and the patterns that you want to address. So um, what I would like to do, and for those of you at home, feel free, uh, we may have someone monitoring. If you have any questions or need any help with this, let me know, we'll try to answer them if we can. Um, but for those of you here, I wanted to get some feedback from you on this experience, uh, anything you learned, anything you thought, anything you're willing to share, any comments or questions. So now is the time. Tough subject. I have to be a little bit brave, but please. Okay, so in one of the lessons, even though it's a Catholic lesson, one has to name me with, you know, I, I know that the emotion that I feel for each other, like a feeling, like I feel like it's a little sometimes too much to ask. You know, it's like a fear of disappointment. Mm -hmm. So the first oil for fear is vinegar. So if I'm getting you right, if I'm reading it, is that like an, an oil that I need to use to overcome it? Is that? Yes, yeah, so for those of you who couldn't hear that at home, she uh, had some fear of disapproval of letting other people down. Is that right, from right. your personal example? And so she looked up fear, because it was the emotion she could identify with and found juniper. And she wanted to know if juniper is going to help her overcome this particular emotion and pattern? And the answer is yes, if you feel like it resonates with you. So juniper is a lot about fear. And so if it's the fear that you're feeling, uh, juniper can help you work through the fear. You could also use another calming oil that makes you feel safe and comforted um, to bring some of that positive strength into your life. So oils can help you release the negative, so help you let go of that pattern of deeply held fear it can also help you if you choose, say, a comforting or calming oil or strengthening, um, courage, those kinds of things that will help bring that into your life and help you move through it. Um, but it's also important to look beneath the fear because we're complicated sometimes and we have layers of emotions. So we want to drill down to see what's underneath the fear. And in your case, there's fear of disappointment. Um, but there, without getting too personal into your story, there's probably, there's probably more to that. And you could sp spend some time thinking about why are you afraid? What is it you think that you lack? What is the expectation that was given to you that you're not sure if you can measure up to? And those kinds of questions can help us dig a little bit deeper and find more um, maybe hidden emotions or more complex emotions or just more emotions. Things can open up doors, so you can write that down and also get more oil information um, from that. So thank you for sharing. That's a really great example and a good learning lesson for everyone. So is there anyone else who wants to share? Okay, but I think that we'll just move on for the sake of time. So um, just remember, as you're dealing with generational issues, that you know we're all human we have light and dark we have good and bad we have positive and negative and so were the people who came before us 
They, um, for better or worse, it depends. <laughs> um, they pass down the best they could and they, um, we are affected by that. And there's more than one way we can look at that and address those kind of situations. But do remember that essential oils, along with other forms of emotional healing, depending on what kinds of issues we're talking about, can help us to overcome these things and they can help us um, learn the lessons and apply the healing that we need to and encourage us on our path. So um, like, well, in my personal example, um, I now have the opportunity, so as a product of these generations and some of these patterns, uh, to heal and release the patterns that don't serve me and don't serve my family. And I also have the opportunity to um, embrace and to cherish the things that do with a grateful heart. The things that were given to me that really serve me and my family, things that I can take with me. So um, we wanted to give you a few more tools in your tool bag because even though you'll be finding emotions that are personal to you maybe, about that are specific to situations, um, these are some great oils, all around oils, that we find are usually necessary in general generational healing work. So um, if there is father issues or kind of your paternal line, if you're finding that things are unresolved there, always have frankincense. Frankincense is your ally here. And frankincense is on page 37 if you want to read that for those of you at home in emotions and essential oils. If you have things that are associated with your mother um, or maternal line that may need to be addressed, myrrh. Uh, myrrh is on page 51. It's really important to have some myrrh. If there's a situation, as we often see, working with my clients and things in the past, I saw a lot of estrangement in family situations because we just don't know quite how to cope with all those strong feelings. We recommend Douglas fir. Douglas fir is great at being able to see the negative and maybe create some boundaries, but also have some more respect. And, and it just can bring people together in a more positive way. Uh, it really encourages that. That's on page 34. And lastly, forgiveness, because what family doesn't need forgiveness? Uh, we all do. And so time, um, I want to pass around just a couple of oils. Time is the oil of forgiveness. It's amazing. Um, page 63 in the book. And also, uh, doTERRA has the renewing blend, or forgive. And these things you can partner with will really help you. So I'll have these passed around really quick. So um, just moving on to the next slide, I wanted to just read, um, we'll just talk about the fact that, um, well, I'll read the quote first, so it's probably easier. So in every conceivable manner, the family is linked to our past, bridge to our future. So we want to take what we learned earlier about the emotional response cycle and how patterns are created, knowing that essential oils work in the very patterns that we talked about. They, the olfactory system routes into the amygdala, creates new information, and is an, is an agent for change. You can interrupt negative patterns. You can also strengthen and reinforce positive patterns in your life with essential oils and the same cycle. So remember that, that when you're working on these things, that change is possible um, and that you can, you can strengthen the things that are good and let go of the things that aren't. It may take time, but it is worth it. And remember that there's hope. There's hope for us to change and to create a different future or to enhance the good things into the new beginnings and the new life that we are, that we are encountering. And um, lastly, I just want to say that it's, in, it's important to be intentional. When you have a new beginning in life, you're starting a new family dynamic, you're getting married, you're having children, or you just feel like now is the time to begin again and look at the things that have happened and look at where you want to go, you can be intentional and actually create positive change and positive uh, growth in your life. And so um, I appreciate you taking this time to go over this topic with me. I'm going to wrap up now and um, if there's any questions after, feel free, but I'll let Brandy come up and share just a little bit more. So thank you again. Huge thank you to Amanda. Um, I should have done a better job when I introduced her by telling you about who she is and who her passion is. And I think it comes through when she presents. Amanda's actually um, 
a trained facilitator in emotional healing. And so you see that uh, she loves uh, essential oils as a tool to help us with emotional healing, but her passion really is in helping people. She is an exceptional teacher and gets uh, where we're coming from. Often we sit down and have marketing meetings and she winds up telling me how I need to, how I can work on being better in my life and, and recommends three or four oils as she leaves. And so she's a blessing, thank you. Um, I just appreciate that. Just wanted to, to make sure that I mentioned that as well. Um, uh, I was following and monitoring some of your comments. A lot of questions about where the book is available. The book is called Emotions and Essential Oils, and you can get it um, through Oil Life. It's available right there. If you look under, um, I noticed on the URL it was collections and then books and media. Um, and so then you can find it, Emotions and Essential Oils. It's available there. And then a lot of people said that you weren't able to see the slides because um, we've got this white text on the green. We're happy to send you um, all of the slides. We have them in a PDF. It's already ready to go. If you guys want to email us, um, customer service at enlightened.com. I'm sorry, customer service at enlightenedhealing.com. Um, and you can see it here at the bottom. Of, well, you probably can't see it on that slide, can you? Customer service at Enlightened Healing, E-N-L-I-G-H-T-E-N-H-E-A-L-I-N-G.com. Um, and just say, hey, can you send me the slides from Amanda's presentation? We'll make sure you get those. And then I also want to tell you, while you're emailing us, you can also request um, your very own free copy of what we call our Emotional Aromatherapy Digital Support Subscription. And actually what that is, it's a monthly course that we put together every single month um, that teaches different topics um, associated with uh, emotional healing and things that we're going through. So what Amanda shared tonight is actually from our upcoming May edition um, of our digital subscription where we're talking about generational healing and the exact exercises that we went through tonight. There's some additional information obviously that's in there as well. Um, but what you get from us is a PDF document that goes through the training and the setup of you know what is a generational pattern and, and what does that mean and some are positive and some are negative. We give you um, the words to say and sort of process through the process of passing out uh, the uh, white fur and helping people to um, go through and actually make a list of their positive and negative patterns so that they can figure out which things they want to work with. And then we give some recommendations about oils. Um, so that comes to you in a PDF document. And then we also give you all of the marketing materials that you would need if you wanted to teach this class. So you saw Amanda do it tonight, but if you're interested in doing this to help you further your doTERRA business, you could do the very same thing that she did. We provide you the PDF document with all of the training. We give you all of the marketing materials um, so that you can share it out on your social media. You can send it out via email. And then we also give you the slides so that if you wanted to do a live webinar, it's not as scary as it, as it looks. Um, if you wanted to do a live webinar, you'd have um, those slides as well. And so that's called our um, digital support subscription. And for everybody who's participating tonight, if you'd like to get a free issue of that, we'll send you the issue that supports what Amanda taught so that you can see what's included in that um, and decide if you want to start sharing these topics with your customers as well. Um, you know, at Enlighten, really our mission is to help people be happier and live more fulfilled lives, to overcome those obstacles that are holding us back and really just to help us as people become the very best people and citizens and family members that we possibly can. So we're excited to share this with you as well. If you'd like to get that, feel free to just send us an email. Same address, customer service at enlightenedhealing.com. If you have any other questions at all for us or for Amanda, we'll be happy to help you address those as well. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for attending live. Thank you for sharing. Um, we appreciate you all. Thank you, Oil Life. We love you. Mm -hmm.